Hello everyone. Welcome to the Healthcare and Health Summit. This is Vaisal from Johnson All Labs. Today I'm going to talk about connecting the dots in clinical document understanding and information extraction. So how do we leverage this information from unstructured EHR data? We basically start collecting these kind of informations from different sources or, or even different hospitals and then try to map them into some structured formats using some NLP methods that I'm going to explain today. So uh, unless we don't have these data, these unstructured EHR data in a structured format on the second row, as you can see, we can we, have, we are not able to query this or use them as a feature for the other downstream tests. So once we have these data in a structured format, the next step is usually putting these clinical facts into a timeline so that we can find the facts and clinical events in a timeline and then create the history patient. The, create the history of the patients and then make some decisions based on these events. So we basically try to answer the clinical questions with the help of uh, artificial intelligence. But the problem here is that the systems used in the hospitals or uh, healthcare uh, organizations are usually there to generate, uh, like, the, like the data in those organizations are usually designed for operations, not to organize data efficiently for research or analytics. So the chances are high that the data that you would working over there will, will be probably unstructured and hard to collect and hard to uh, extract in, in knowledge. So as I said, we are trying to put in the clinical facts on a timeline so that we can go back or at certain point of time, we can make some decisions based on the previous uh, events or facts. So let's say that the patient is diagnosed as a lung cancer at 2016. So we would like to know that if that if that status will change in one month or three months, or let's say that this patient will be readmitted to the clinic uh, in certain uh, period of time in the future. So if we can know that, know this information, and if we can extract uh, all this information from the clinical notes, produces, produce for the last few years, we would be able to build this clinical fact, put this clinical fact on a timeline, and then so that we can use this information in our downstream machine learning algorithms. So how do we do this in clinical NLP? I'm, I'm trying to explain how we do this at John Snow Labs and which kind of NLP modules that we developed that we, uh, that we have been working on so far to accomplish this task in medical NLP. In uh, clinical NLP, everything usually starts with clinical entity recognition. Clinical entity recognition is the basis of uh, all the other downstream tests that you can see on this slide. So we basically try to list meaningful uh, chunk from any clinical text and then try to feed this information to the other downstream tests that could help us answer, answer certain questions uh, about the patient, right? So we might we might get the clinical entity as a like like uh, some symptom or some disorder and then feed this to the entity uh, resolvers and then end up with some SNOMED code, RC, ICD-10 codes or Arisonum code for the billing purposes. Or we can try to find the patient cohort for some clinical trials and then want to uh, filter out some of the patients that have the, some, some sort of symptoms that are not related to our study or we have some symptoms that are related, to, that are not related to patients. So that's why we use assertion statuses. Or we want to obfuscate or to identify the sensitive protected health information by using some de-identification model. So to be able to de-identify or, or obfuscate this kind of information, we usually try to uh, find the sensitive information at first with the clinical NER models, and then try to mask or obfuscate them. And then uh, as a last step, we try to find the relationship between these clinical events to answer why and how kind of questions. If we can find which clinical entity is related to another one or how they are getting along with each other, we would be able to answer some human level questions. So let's say that we have such kind of clinical text. On the left hand side, you see a small, like a few sentences of clinical text that you might see in any radiology reports. Let's say that we have a patient with a, uh, with a test of CT abdomen, and then the doctors put some notes, like there's no evidence for retroperitoneal hematoma, etc. So the ideal condition is feeding this document 
in a NLP pipeline and at the end at the end uh, and at the end of the pipeline ending up with these kind of all these features uh, in a few seconds so let's say that we fit this and we want to know that this condition this retroperitoneal hematoma is not evident right because the sentence says that it is not evident so the goal is to extract that part at first and then assign some assertion status like absent if we even if we have this condition we would still want to know its icd codes uh, to be able to use in our records or billing purposes. Or we might have some findings uh, from this radiology report, and then we would like to find out the size of the uh, findings, and then we would want to, we would like to uh, link this size with the, the clinical condition or the findings, or which side of the body part. So if we can find the measurements, metrics, symptoms, applied test, and then body part and which side of the body part. If we, uh, extracting all these entities is one thing, but connecting all these entities in a meaningful timeline or, or in a meaningful tree is more important than extracting the entities. So how we do this? So as I, as I have been saying so far, we are using EMR data as well as EHR data to answer some questions in uh, in healthcare and then help healthcare professionals to uh, make some decisions based on the data that they might have forget to check or they might want to see in a more structured way rather than just the free text data. So in clinical NER models, we usually try try to train certain different models to, uh, to extract entities from different domains. If you want to analyze some medication data you would train a, you would use a pathology in ER model and then try to extract some frequency or or duration of drug information if you want to find the body part you need to use the anatomania if you want to find the sensitive information to obfuscate further you need to use phr in ER. in spark nlp we have more than 80 different clinical in ER models that are already trained on some public metadata data sets as well as in-house annotations so we recently tried to uh, do some benchmarks on the accuracy of uh, clinical uh, name data recognition models in Spark NLP with respect to the other competition-based data sets like I2V2. So we, we at first tried to compare the accuracy of Spark NLP algorithm, which is by LSTMC and Anchor Architecture, and we already published three papers about this. We compared this with two different competition at first. 2010 clinical concept extraction, 2014 the identification challenge, and 2018 medication extraction challenge. As you can see, even with the competition best and latest best since this uh, since these competitions, Spark NLP right now has the highest scores. Then we move, we went ahead and then try to compare uh, NER models, Spark NLP NER models with AWS Medical Compliant and Google Cloud Platform Healthcare API. We basically tried to, uh, we basically sampled 1,000 mimic nodes uh, and then sampled three different uh, entities, problem tests and drugs, which are used, uh, which are highly used in, uh, which are highly populated in any clinical text, and then try to see how each of this, uh, each of this tool perform on the same uh, data set. So as you can see, Spark NLP has the highest accuracy IEC trait compared to the other uh, commercial solutions. So let's deep dive. For NER, we try to find uh, the target entities given the sentence. Like the NER algorithm that we use in Spark NLP is called by LSTMC and Char Architecture. So we try to create some features about each word by using transfer learning and then feed these features into a network, deep learning architecture to extract these entities. So in this simple sentence, we, uh, we extract almost more than 10 different entities that we can uh, try to put on a timeline by using the other NLP tools. So in this text, we found out that there is a patient, like a pregnant patient, uh, and, uh, and her mother has a lung cancer. So, which means that we can uh, know that there is a patient with this condition and there are some uh, other 
oncological history not related to herself but related to her uh, family and we can also track when this patient discharged or admitted to a clinic and then uh, what is the prescription that she's on or she needs to use after discharge so the next step usually try to find out uh, like after finding the clinical entities you, the next step usually try to find out the assertion status like given the entity what makes this entity uh, uh, negative or present so if we want to uh, focus on the present entities uh, we would like to filter out negative ones like the past entities or the absent conditions by uh, extracting the assertion status of each entities so in this text we at first detected the lung cancer as an as an oncological entity through NER models and then assertion status assigned family label to this one because it's uh, because with the context it's clear that this symptom this uh, entity is not related to patient but is related to her family members so we can uh, easily use this information to uh, filter out some other patients or uh, or select some uh, cohort from the best subset of the patients so by applying this uh, uh, by extracting each entities and then feeding this to an assertion algorithm, we would be able to assign different assertion labels for each entity. And the next step is uh, building the relationship between the entities. So let's say that we have a CT of abdomen that we want to, uh, like we want to find which procedures are applied to which body part. So our NER model could extract at first imaging test, like find the CT as an imaging test, and another NER model could find abdomen as a body part. But how we are going to find the relationship between the body part and CT and this radiology test? So it is usually the case that the body part may not happen right next to the test, right? It might happen at the beginning of the text or at just on the table, just on the header. Maybe it would appear. Uh, somewhere th uh, at the bottom of the page. So our goal is to find, like a build a relation extraction algorithm to find the relationship between this imaging test and then the body part so that we can know that because the meaning of imaging test or the, or the CPT code, let's say, or you want to tabulate this information in, an, in, in, a, in any other format, you would need to find which body part uh, like which test is applied to which body part. So that's why you need to find the relationship between the radiologic test and then the body part. Or there are some observations in the same report, right? Maybe uh, the report talks about some measurements and some units, and then you, you would like to find out uh, what is the size of the findings or the tumor that is mentioned in the report, or which part of the body is impacted or the physician talk about which part of the body. So if we can find about, find uh, these kind of relationships and then build them and then build the, the and then connect the dots in, in backwards and the forwards, you would be able to create the entire holistic picture of a patient. Just by reading one single text, you would be able to create different, you would be able to populate different tables given these relationships. And the last step is usually uh, using all these information and all these uh, relationship and entities, combining a query text to find some medical terminology codes. Assume that you want to find the CPT code uh, of the radiology test mentioned in the text. So if you just fit the uh, CT to entity resolver, you would end up with less informative query text. But if you find the body part and then join that body part with the imaging text, you would inform, you would fit the entity resolution algorithm with much informative text, and then you would end up with almost perfect solution. As you can see, instead of feeding the CT to entity resolution algorithm, if we fit CT of abdomen to the same algorithm, we would end up with this code, and its ground truth explanation is exactly what we need. So if we do the same with the, like any findings that say that malfunction in mass, mass if, you, if we feed this, we would end up with different ICD-10 CM codes. But if we also find the re related or impacted body part that is mentioned in the same text, 
we would feed this resolver with much informative text, and then the ICD time resolver would resolve more, uh, like most similar uh, explanation from the time knowledge. So that's how uh, we try to connect the dots in uh, medical NLP using all these uh, NER and then the assertion statuses and then the relation extraction and then ending up with the entity resolution algorithms. So this is a uh, this slide. I'm I'm just going to talk about how we build such a pipeline in Spark NLP uh, by all these tools. I'm I, I I will try to combine all these tools in one single pipeline. So let's say we feed a text and then our NLP pipeline try to extract the sentences and then they get the tokens and then the, using the transfer learning uh, from different embeddings we extract we assign embeddings for our token and then feed this information to clinical NER models. Clinical NER algorithms try to find what makes this chunk uh, problem or test entities given the, given the type of the NER models. Then using this information we fit this chunk to the birth sentence embeddings, which is state of the art contextual embeddings. We try to find the contextual representation of this chunk and then try to end up with the resolution for ICD 10 or Sonomet codes. We, as you can see, we are not just extracting the code, but we are also extracting the variable status or HCC status. How we do this? Because each code, each ICD 10 code, is already mapped to some. Uh, believable codes or HCC status. So by leveraging this information, we try in different models uh, by using the birth sentence embeddings and we extract, we try to assign each unstructured chunks to a structured version of uh, from any terminology that you might need. Uh, like maybe you, you might want to use SNOMED codes uh, or Alex Norm or, uh, or CPT-4. So at the end, we connect the dots and build this complex, uh, <coughs> uh, complex architecture. So uh, ev ev everything that I have been talking uh, so far is, uh, is about extracting all this information and filling up some tables or extracting some information that could be useful for the other downstream task. So to make this uh, as fast uh, to make this as efficient as possible and then integrate it into the current IT structure. So we deploy such a pipeline that we connect all these uh, modules, NLP modules, each other and then uh, deploy it in a Kubernetes uh, environment. Since there are some uh, heavy like memory intensive modules like ICD-10 or SNOMED resolvers because they are all fed by the BERT embeddings, we try to deploy all into different uh, nodes and then try to write one single uh, interface to communicate each of these modules in a, a pipeline. So we basically feed a text and then the, this document parser try to communicate with each of these annotators uh, in a pipeline and then extract the solutions that could be digestible for the rest of the other uh, components in the uh, IT systems. So as you can see, even with this complex architecture, just parsing one single document and extracting every bit of information that are connected to each other uh, can take uh, less than three seconds in very uh, in a decent mission like two core. So thank you for listening to me. I hope uh, uh, I, I just try to cover how to connect the dots in the clinical document understanding and information extraction and try to explain how we do this in Spark NLP uh, under the roof, roof of Johnson Labs. Thank you.